What up, Pittsburgh Steelers fans? Today we are talking about the Steelers slot corner position for 2024. That's right, the Steelers slot corner position, often filled by Shannon Sullivan last year, has been a gap on the roster. Kazi can play a bit there. Deshaun Elliott can play a bit there. We've all talked a lot about Beanie Bishop, the undrafted free agent out of WVU, who I do think has the inside running at that spot. A lot of people are comparing him to Mike Hilton already. But there's another contender for the Steelers slot corner position, and that is Josiah Scott. Now, Josiah Scott has joined the Steelers. Um, he is a guy that, you know, came into the league as a slot corner, as he said. He's an ex-Jacksonville, ex-Philadelphia Eagle. And this quote was on the Steelers' blog after OTAs, and it said, I came in as the league as a slot corner. I'm most comfortable there. I've played many snaps, had many reps there. At slot, you're asked to know I feel like a lot more of the defense. You have to know what the front is doing. You've got to know what's going outside you, behind you. You're kind of like a mini linebacker. There's a lot on your plate. You've got to take on a guard pulling, playing in the box, guarding against receivers. There's a lot asked of an inside corner, so there's definitely more to it. Now, that's interesting because that could be a hard thing for a undrafted rookie to come and do. Most people had a between a fourth and a sixth, seventh, sixth round grade on Beanie Bishop. That is a lot for Beanie Bishop to do. Again, I think Beanie Bishop is capable of it. You look at Josiah Scott, he's a five foot nine, 185 pound guy, picked in the fourth round by Jacksonville out of Michigan State. Um, the said he had one season with the with Jags, then two with the Eagles. Then he came to the practice squad um, training camp last season, wound up um, practice squad injured reserve on September 14th, um, and eventually ended up back in Philadelphia. But then he's back this year to try and fight for that spot. So the Steelers have seen him a little bit. Now, he talks about being in that slot corner. I can tell you, if you look at the PFF, I know Beber doesn't love PFF, but they do line everyone up in terms of their position. Um, so it is helpful in terms of the alignment snap counts, even if they're slightly off. In his NFL career to date, he has played 458, 458 snaps at slot. He's only played 582 snaps total in the NFL. Um, so 458 at slot is really helpful there. Um, that's on defense, I should say, not special teams. Um, he's played 57 at the outside corner, 55 in the box, seven at free safety, and three on the defensive line in some of their schemes. But what other productions Josiah Scott had? Because, I mean, he's taking on Beanie Bishop for this slot corner role or maybe even an after undrafted free agent. Well, you look at him, he's a little, the guy's only 24, 20, 20, 25. That's really good um, from that perspective. The guy's played 39 games so far in his career. He's only started four. He only played four in 2023. His, 2022 was his biggest year of production. That was the biggest year of production also because he faced 32 targets. This is a bloke that literally has only faced just over 50 targets in his in the course of his career. He has allowed a maximum of 100% last year where he allowed six on six. When he did face those 32 targets, he only allowed a completion rate of 68.8%. The previous year when he had nine targets thrown his way, he only allowed 66.7%. So he allowed six catches on nine targets thrown his way. Yards per completion is generally pretty high apart from last year, well over 12 and a half yards. So that's huge. A quarterback rating, he gives quarterbacks a rating of 112.5 in his rookie year, 134.5 in 2021. When he faced those 32 targets, he's still allowed a quarterback rating of 103.5. So huge numbers there. That kind of sucks when you look at it as a coverage perspective, but in certain schemes, he might get blown open. But one thing he does do well from a Josiah Scott perspective, he has not missed a tackle, according to Pro Football Reference. Not missed tackle. Now, PFF might have something different. I don't trust the PFF missed tackle numbers because their sack numbers are way off. I do trust more of the alignment and snaps. They do do that pretty well. But he's not missed a single tackle in the NFL. That sure, assured tackles um, or assured tackle ability could be huge for the Steelers as a slot corner. And it's something that Beanie Bishop's not afraid to go hit someone. It's something that Beanie Bishop, Beanie Bishop brings to the table. But it is something that could really show up for Steelers coaching stuff. This is also despite the fact he's played, look, he's not played a lot of snaps on defense. He played his career highest 37% in 2022 when he faced those 32 targets. Otherwise, he's barely had over 10, didn't even have 20% in, in his rookie year, didn't and, and didn't have 6% on defense. But he has played a bit of special teams. And again, this is how we could find a way to get onto the Steelers roster. 49% special team snaps for Philadelphia in 21, 36% in 2022, and in 2023, 43%. So from a Josiah Scott perspective, this kid 
could really challenge Beanie Bishop as the Steelers slot corner in 2024. The Steelers are probably going to take, I think, while they might pencil someone in there, um, and we've even heard rumors of Shannon Sullivan, we even consider coming back, depending on what happens to him through this offseason, whether he's cut from another team, what have you. The Steelers probably are addressing this, even if they label a guy. I still personally think that this is going to be a slot corner by committee approach. Now, some people put in the comments right now, like, oh, well, they might have already done it before they get to this point in video. People are putting Cam Sutton. Do the Steelers bring Cam Sutton back? I'm not a fan of that with the off-field issue. I don't think the Steelers need to do that. I don't think it's wise for them to do that. I think Cam's not getting to a older age right now, Cam Sutton. I don't think that we need to go down that path. I'd rather them find someone young, cheap, they can develop. That is something that I think the Steelers need to do, especially with Brown, um, Grady Brown, the um, the cornerbacks coach, defensive backs coach. He's a really good coach there. I think he can do it. That's what I would like to see. I'd like to see them stay cheap at the position because we've got cheap in Darius Rush. We've got cheap in Corey Trice Jr. Joe Porter Jr. is on a rookie contact contract. Um, Dante Jackson's actually pretty cheap with his restructure as well. In fact, the Steelers have, a, despite having the most expensive defense in the league, they actually have one of the cheapest cornerback rooms in the league. Um, their cornerback room, I can actually pull this up for you, um, but their cornerback room is like literally in the bottom eight in the league. Like they, uh, it's not where they're spending their money on defense. It's not. Um, and so from my perspective, that's really important because they are investing a lot of money in outside linebackers. Now, this is going to look like a massive spreadsheet of numbers um, for everyone that's watching right now. I, don't worry. I'm going to talk you through it. Um, but if you look at the CB, condi- the, the, the spending on CBs, the Steelers have one of the cheapest in the league. The Chiefs and Chargers are only spending $13 million each. Obviously, the Chiefs moved on um, you know, with Snead. Then you've got $15 million, um, between the P- Panthers, the Bengals, the Rams, the Raiders, and the Colts. And then you've got the Jags and the Steelers playing $16 million each. So they're just inside the top 10 for the cheapest cornerback rooms. That's despite the Steelers spending 16, oh, sorry, $161 million on defense. So they're literally only spending 10% of their defensive expenditure is going on cornerback. And slot corner is a, is a position where guys are generally paid a bit less. It's probably a position that the Steelers do need to invest a decent draft pick into if Beanie Bishop doesn't result into being something, or if even Josiah Scott doesn't resolve to being something. It is a position we've seen taken quite highly with Jacob like Brian Branch in last year's draft. He was drafted to the um, Detroit Lions. And slot corner has certainly worked out to be a new position, or not a new position, but become a very specific position on its own that obviously not a lot of cornerbacks can do. But if you can find a cheap guy, whether it is Beanie Bishop, whether it is Josiah Scott, then that could be really helpful. Um, in terms of keeping this CB number low. Because when you actually look at this spending, and I'll probably do a video soon once we get close to the season with more cuts, I'll do a video on how the Steelers spending is, is invested. But you look at safety. The Steelers have the second most ex- most expensive safety group with Deshaun Elliott and Minka Fitzpatrick. You look at linebacker. Now, this is middle linebacker, inside linebacker for the Steelers. $23 million, top five in the league. Edge, second most expensive. No, not the most expensive because the Chargers have Bosa and Khalil Mack together, whereas we've got TJ and Highsmith, and there's also restructures there. But interior defensive line, we're third most. Most of that's wrapped up in Cam because this is not a number before Cam, a new Cam deal, which could see some numbers move around. So keep, as I say, having a the cheapest possible person at, at one of the cheapest positions on the defense in slot corner would be very helpful for the Steelers. But just because it's cheap, doesn't mean it isn't a key position. It is a key position. Do you let me know in the comments, do you think Josiah Scott can challenge Beanie Bishop or are we just on the Beanie Bishop hype train, WVU all the way with him and Frazier? Let me know in the comments. As always, go Steelers.